say a bit about that day. I am the victim of a broken assault in Brooklyn Market. No, that's not Briefly, mm -hmm. I have been a Brooklyn resident for over 50 years. I am walking through the market and I was subjected to a brutal assault. Racist assault. We've got a few people here today that will give their account of what has taken place. But before they come, I need to constantly remind you why we're down here. Our main demand is for no cash and carry till it goes down. I, don't, I didn't hear you, brothers and sisters. I said no cash and carry till it goes down. Shut it down. Before we've actually started, brothers and sisters, we were disrupted by a few individuals who were upset. And I want to address that point. Many people have asked us in the past, especially our young people, how the hell did a minority white people keep us enslaved for over 400 years? That question has been asked many times. The answer We've seen a slight bit of it today. The white man could not have kept us in enslavement for 400 years without the collaboration of some of us between us. We had collaborators then and we have them now. And we're here to say, brothers and sisters, this is a system that they have set up. But we're not going to be deflected because we know who our true enemy is. As a result of the attack, some of our young friends in the community have come forward and have said we should go and just totalize those workers. Hold on, brother Minka. What did you just say? They said brutalized workers. When a group of people come out of a shop and attack a local resident, this ain't workers, this is an example of gangsterism. This is a result of gangsterism. This ain't just an issue about Noor. This is an issue about Brixton Village who allow these people to operate. Yes. This is an issue about Brixton Lambeth Council who allow these people to operate. We don't need no petition. We are here to say it's totally unacceptable for a shop within our community to think it's all right to brutalize a local resident. What do you say, brothers and sisters? Yes. Unacceptable. unacceptable. All right. Now, I can't come on this megaphone before I introduce a couple of our independent witnesses. Because some people have got a lot to say, but I'm not gonna speak second hand. I'm gonna speak first hand, and I'm gonna get you to listen to the people that was here first hand. And as I'm here, I just have to acknowledge my great sister, who is blessed to say today, our sister Marcia Rick. Marcia Rick, Marcia Rick is a tireless campaigner in our community. Marcia Rick Brappa was brutally killed by Brixton police and to rock sword into the wound. The killers of Marcia Rick Brappa was given compensation for stress of we trying to get justice with them in the courts. That's the kind of system we're up against, brothers and sisters. And so, before I introduce our independent witnesses, I've got to address a video that's been out there. The video out there shows a man on the front of it. Apologies if I haven't seen all of them. The man on the front of the video that you've seen on social media, that's the man that actually began the first assault against me. But we'll come on to that. So what kind of shocked me, brothers and sisters, is that you had a brother apologizing. And when I looked at that, it brought me back to a film I saw on slavery. And it was like 
sorry, Massa. I'm sorry, Massa. We apologize, Massa, for upsetting you. Please don't take away my, my, my food for the next three days. As a young man watching a video like that, I wonder why the man never strangled him rather than bleeding like some little baby. Brothers and sisters, we don't have nothing to apologize for. We've come back to the scene of a crime, a very serious crime, and we're not going to let it rest. Just to let you know, brother, new flash. New flash. And I'll speak more on this later. The police! Brixton police! Got it! Have said that they will be taking no further action. I beg your pardon. I don't think I heard what I just said. I beg your pardon. No further action. Excuse me. I asked them, give me some of the reasons. You are hearing me, brother. Says I'm saving that for later because I don't want to pressure this. That witnesses that I have not seen before, spoken to before, seen one before, never spoken to him. I want you to listen to what they observe on the day as I'm walking from Brixton Market and Brixton Market brings back four memories. As a little boy, I used to come through the market with my mother carrying her shopping basket and yet I hear some people telling me I should be walking through the market. No way! No way! A resident of Brixton? I must not go through without security? They're gonna have to kill me. And they try to. Never. So you'll hear more about that later. I don't want to this what you're gonna hear. But before you hear from the independent witnesses, we will remind those out here why we're here. So we say no catch and carry, close it down now. No catch and carry! Close it down now! No catch and carry! You want to hear this? This is the other brother. This is the other brother. That never speak. I've seen him around. Never speak to him before. As them say me never know him from Adam. Not you, my brother. Greetings, brothers and sisters. Greetings. As you know, Brother Mika is a fan of the guest. And also, we open up the stand on Barbos for him. Between our soul tell on that day, sitting where you sit, uh, generally talking with him, friend, generally, come out of the shop. And so, uh, the owner of uh, Lou, jumping over him, and asking him to move out of that area. Well, I mean, uh, well, uh, generally, uh, he's not in any area, he's uh, outside the shop, and he's uh, 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 the owner of Lou, pushing. As we stop the conflict, and ask him as the owner of Lua to stop the fighting, to stop the assaulting. The conflict was over. The owner started to push us when we stopped the conflict. Two of them brothers coming in and agree. When Brother Mika was already out of it, no. Then coming as soldiers are three of it, and say, oh, the conflict is not over. And it's happened to each one of us. What's wrong with them? What did they dance against us? What did we do wrong to them? Did they have a discrimination against us? What Brother Minka, as a head of our community, should be assaulted? All we feel, as a son of his brother, as a pan Africanist, all we feel, you should apologize. Shame on you. Shame on you. Shame on you. Thank you. I always. When I 
Black people. All right. Well, I write a lot of edits. Yeah. My right. I don't have the full use of my right arm. Still getting hospital checks. Okay. The checks are on going. And so we just want to remind the family why we're here now because this is a case of gangsterism now. This ain't know nothing about. This ain't know nothing about shop workers. Shop workers not here. The way that people be here. So here we go now. So for those who haven't heard, hear it now, live and direct. I'm walking through the market, and as I come to this shop, Nora Cash and Carry. Notorious North. I see two brothers. One of them you heard from. That's what I said it's gonna be two. I said to the brother. Brother, are you aware? That there is a boycott on this shop. Yeah, two. Yeah. I wanna make it clear. I wanna make it clear. Please remember, brothers and sisters, this is a peaceful protest. Do not be distracted. Do not be distracted or deflected. Is that my Dr. Abu here? Dr. Abu there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. I want to rise up, Dr. Abu. I want to rise up the Galaxy family. Galaxy of the way. When you leave, brothers and sisters, I want you to remember Galaxy, the only D brainwashing station. When you want to get updates, and there will be updates, I want you to tune in to Know Your Rights show every Friday, 6 to 8, Galaxy of Huey. Before that, you will hear Dr. Abu. And I want to give thanks and praise for the doctor taking time out of his busy schedule. On Sunday, you can hear Dr. Abu again and also Prophet Medote. Very cool. But we'll probably hear a few words on later. And I cannot mention Galaxy without mentioning the Commander in Chief, our Nana, Pakumbrabai. Did somebody say Nana's here? Yeah. I want you to put a big hand together for Nana Pakumbrabai. They've been going for 40 years. But let me just say something right before I go on. The shop that we're in front. Flowers, fashion, exclusive. Please, do we not block the man's doorway? Please. I don't, we're not here to block the doorway. And I want to tell you as a little plug for the shop. When I was called to a naming ceremony, I was requested for me to dress in white. And it's this shop that comes to get my white outfit. And I don't want anything to know. We, have, we might interrupt you later here. But when you get a chance to support our brother here, we're not just lie by night. We believe in supporting our black businesses. 21 Brixton King. Flowers fashion exclusive, support the brother, okay? Support the brother. So as I'm speaking now to the two brothers, the manager, the manager of this shop that many of our community is happy to praise. Why? Them say them sell Marcus started the rights of peace. Because I get a little free planting. What does, what does these parasitical traders do? Then put the price, for 10 pounds. We come in at the shop and then now then put it down to here for nine and get it to four pounds enough. Put it to ten pounds. When we come in, then give it then sir, I don't give you a deal, eight pounds. A favor. A favor. And we feel that's enough loyalty. And just rub it. Loyalty. So when somebody says to them, I have been assaulted and brutalized, they say, no, my little squeeze is more important yeah. than that. Yeah. That's a modern day slave, yeah. brothers and sisters. A modern day slave. Yeah. All right? So now the manager comes out to push me. Mm. And as we're out here today, brothers and sisters, this is the 99th year of the birth of Omawadi Malcolm X. A man come and push you with that kind of spirit of Malcolm. I have to push him back. This is self-defense, right? Self-defense is no offense. Within the twinkle of an eye, I hear is that nigger again. I don't usually use that word, but I gotta make it plain because this is Brixton. And then rush me! One of them took me in my mouth! Bring them up! Oh my god! Bring them up! Show me down on the floor about six feet of them. And if you see an Asian woman and a white woman, they were encouraging that. 
And that's why when the police said that they are arrested free, I said there were more than three people involved there. You know, that was a group of black youths attacking a white youth. You know that what would happen, brothers and sisters. They would be in a jail right now. Yes. Brutalized on the ground, kicking me all over my body. The police then come onto the scene and they scatter like cockroaches. I said to the police, I recognize those people. I'm not a stranger down here. In this country, we've got a right to peaceful protest. We've been out here for some time about a sister. We, I wasn't campaigning on that day. And we weren't here about the charges. The sister's on six charges. I can tell you this now, brothers and sisters. None of these charges are for theft. I you know it's when you listen on yeah. social media. Yeah. How much them say this is a key from coming out with your fatigue? Nice. I don't know if anybody heard that. I just mean, the sister has not been charged for any theft. They have, so they have CCTV in them app in them shop. If the sister was guilty of any theft, she would have been charged. Yeah. I hear them say they try to burn down a shop. <laughs> the sister threw something down. down on the ground, you know, in a fire. But let me tell you this if they got evidence for arson, let them put the charge. This sister has not been charged for no attempted arson. I've got to be guided by the law. So when we come down here now, I'm saying part of the exchange with the sister is that they call her a black poor. As a black man, I can't hear that. I can't hear that without not making some representation. So I reached out. I reached out to my brother Carl, and I'm going to call you to show you why this attacked by these thugs, because they're not workers. They are thugs and gangsters. Yeah. Why they felt so important to attack me? That's the come, and I'm gonna get Robert Carl to say something about that. But I just wanna conclude on this point. The sister has not been charged for no theft. The sister has not been charged for no arson. So all those house Negroes that are out there, that the police is no friend of ours, no, this shop is no friend of ours, yeah. and if they have evidence of what they're spreading on social media, they're going to charge her a long time ago. Yeah. And we'll be at that court when she goes down there. We were outside of this shop, not to intimidate nobody, peacefully. All we're saying is that you don't come and disrespect a black woman, and as a black man, we don't. We have something to say. Yeah. So, I out, yeah. so I reached out to my brother Carl, campaign for truth and justice and I just want Brother Carl to step up and give an account of what happened when we came into the shop. But before I'm gone, I want to let you know a few chants. No cash and carry! Boy, no cash and carry! No cash and carry! No cash and carry! No cash and carry! And brothers and sisters, you know, these traders, they got a code. And the code is this. When one of their shop or in any dispute, the rest of them from the different chapters just gang in and join in, they're afraid. That's their code. But we also got that code, brothers and sisters. What is that code? We say, touch one. 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 Now, I personally, we came to this shop to try and talk with them, to negotiate with them. And we were inside the shop and they decided to be, become aggressive. And eventually, they called the police or someone called the police. And when the police came, when the Metropolitan Police came, they gave them authority to use force to, get, to eject us from the shop. The Metropolitan Police told them, you can use force to get them out if you wish, as long as it's reasonable. So that is why they believe that they can come out here and assault an elder in our community. Because they believe, no, not because they believe, because they've been sanctioned by the police. And now, despite the arrests that have taken place, the police have decided no further action. So what kind of message is that to us? We're talking about a residence of Brixton, just walking through the market, having a, had a conversation with a couple of brothers, and that resulted in him being subjected to a violent 
When they said, there's that nigger again, they're talking about all of us. They're talking about all of us. And we have to, do, we cannot stop until this shop is closed down. We demand nothing less they say. Or was it Frederick Douglass that said, power without a demand. It never has and it never will. And we're, that's why we are demanding the closure of this door. Because unless that happens, this protest will not stop. We're not going to have it. That means if we, if we stand by and, and, and do nothing, do not demand the closure, then what's going to happen with our granddaughters? Our grandsons? Because they're, they're getting, they've been given permission. If there's no consequence, and they'll just step it up. So we have to step it up. Thank you so much for listening. And once again, thank you for coming out in these numbers to, to support our brother against this violent racist assault which he was subjected to. And do, do, do continue to tune into Galaxy Afruida.net and where you will be uh, constantly updated with any progress or digress in this matter.
And just for those before I introduce Pastor Lorraine, we ain't letting it stop there. What's on the agenda is a private prosecution. Yeah. And I say this, brothers and sisters, because this is not new. All of us can remember Stephen Lawrence, right? Yeah. How much evidence did the police have? Yeah. How much evidence did they have? Yeah. And what did they do? Yeah. I didn't hear you. Yeah. What did they do? Yeah. What did they do? Yeah. And you know what Doreen Lawrence said? And never Lawrence? You know what? You won't do nothing. We will. Yeah. That's right. And they took the police. They said, we're going to prosecute this case. You won't. And I'm telling you this, brothers and sisters, we are going to do the same thing. Yes. We are going to do the same thing. May the propaganda has been given. What is the propaganda? You have heard this. We can go to the other party. We want change. Everybody said things have changed. I'm going to bear witness that the change that's happened with the police since Stephen Lawrence is worse. That's the change. And I'm not going to let them get away with their nasty propaganda. People on the video have said, why are we talking about no cash and carry? Why don't we talk about those young people being killed? I beg your pardon. Do you know who has been trying to bring together all the various families into one unit? Don't look no further. You're looking at me right now. Because there's a plan to destroy our young people. And the police is a central part of that plan. Yeah. I can't say it, but I'm telling you. Please, to the warm up, my sister, Lorraine, who is doing some great work in our community. Pastor Lorraine. To the Touch one. 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 Touch one.
know. Yeah, that's our strong, our community feel. Our question is being asked. 